Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm Darren Karp, and joining me today from 90 Day Fiance is a man who absolutely deserves love. I've got Ed Brown, a.k.a. Big Ed on the line. How you doing, Ed? Good to see you. Darren, how are you doing? I am doing well. I am lucky to get to talk to you. You're a handsome man in pink today, so it's going to be a pretty good interview. And we're gonna... it's salmon. Oh, it's salmon. <laughs> Oh, oh, I like a man that has a particular color palette. So but correct I, me. I, 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 do look good in, I do look good in pink, though. Yeah, you do look great in every color, Ed. Well, you oh, know, no. we're going to see you on this season of 90 Day, uh, The Single Life. And we're going to be seeing Big Ed 2.0. This comes after your break with Liz. Why did you two ultimately decide to end things? Um, well, I think it had more to do with just timing wasn't right and it was rushed. I think we both rush things and um but yeah i would narrow it down to timing and we just i tried to move too fast it's understandable we all kind of are uh timing can be the worst of us but how did you sort of work on getting over liz throughout the season was there anything that you went through or did oh absolutely i went through um um mind therapy i got into i had hired a therapist which uh -huh. um i didn't really know to be quite honest, how to be in a relationship with Rose or with Liz for that matter. And I really didn't want to be the person. I didn't like who I was. I didn't like who I was physically. So I dropped like 25 pounds. I was in the gym every day. And then I knew I had to work on being a better version on the inside. So if, you know, if I ever had an opportunity to be with Liz again, you know, that I would be a better boyfriend, which I learned through therapy. Like you look back at, you know, and I wasn't a good person. I wasn't a good boyfriend. I didn't treat Liz like she deserved to be treated. You know, I, didn't, I wasn't a good listener. Just all of that stuff that it was all about me. I was so self-consumed with who I was and this idea of stardom. And I wasn't, you know, really able to be with her. Well, I mean, that's, that's understandable. I mean, it's kind of a, a lot to take in. But, Ed, I can't really have you on here and not talk about the fact that you are an internet sensation you know how surprised were you that the world became so invested in your life personally and just your romantic life and did that play a role in maybe you taking the steps to work on yourself did the did the oh, did the fandom help you absolutely in so many ways i um along with the hate which we all get right when you when you, when you put your life out there people are going to dig and they're, they're going to make up things about you that aren't true but I also had an opportunity to touch, move, and inspire kind of the younger generation. When you have an eight-year-old that, that rides up on a skateboard and stops in his tracks and goes, you're a legend, it's an opportunity for me to really inspire someone like that. So um, I'm doing a lot uh, because of my, my um, celebrity-ness. I'm, um, I'm currently working in the restaurant as an um, executive bartender of Kitty. I'm a bar back, but all my proceeds go towards St. Jude's, um, working with Meals on Wheels. So I'm just trying to take my stardom and make a difference, you know, in the world. I want to, you know, it, I, I've been blessed by, 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 by means you have no idea with my video shout outs. Um, so financially, it's been overwhelming and I just feel a need to give back. And this is why I love you. This is why America loves you, because you're just a really good guy at the end of the day. But I do have to ask you something, Ed, because from the trailer, it looks like you're going to be involved in a little bit of a precarious, dangerous situation. Gunshots fired during yeah. a date. Can you explain what's going on here? Yeah. So we were in what we would call cartel country. We were about two hours south of Puerto Vallarta in Mexico. And there was a big... Um, um, concern about security and we had i'm like why are all these cops always following us you know we always we never went anywhere in mexico without a police escort i'm like you know what's going on you know i'm you know this is this is mexico my mom's from mexico i don't know what the big deal is and one night you know i'm in a restaurant on, on my first date and we're sitting there having a great conversation and all of a sudden we hear gunfire and security runs in and we literally ran to the bathroom and hovered for our life. I've never been so afraid in my life. It was, I mean, everybody was crying. Um, the, the girl that I was out with that night was crying. I was not crying, but really, I literally thought this is it. This is how my life's going to end. And because you see so much violence, you hear, you know, the, the mall shootings and the, you know, the at workplace, you know, shootings and, 
and I'm going here. It's happening right now. So um, stay tuned. It was a wild, crazy ride um, last season, and I'm excited, which it airs on, I believe, the um, November 8th. It's on Discovery Plus, which is a streaming platform. It's only $4.99, which is less than a cup of coffee um, a month. And you can see, actually, my whole envelope of everything I've ever filmed with TLC, as well as season two um, of The Single Life. Wow. Well, first off, that's definitely a chapter in your book of your life, but I'm glad that you and your date are okay. And I'm curious to kind of watch it this season. But Ed, I, I can't help but notice there's a little bit of an e extra empty chair next to you. And I heard that there's someone special that you might want to bring on to fill that empty seat. Would you mind bringing them on? Not at all. Let me see if I can get their attention. Okay, here we go. Oh, wait, you didn't shave? I thought you were going to shave. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. He didn't shave. Well, who's so, that? <laughs> so, Darren, as you may not know, I lost Teddy about yeah. um, two months ago, and um, and it was heartbreaking. And um, at the time, um, Liz and I had been actually broken up for six months, and somebody had dropped off flowers, and with kind of a coded message, I didn't know who they were from. And it wasn't until I looked on my ring camera that I realized it realized that it was Liz. And she was crying because she really had an understanding of who Teddy was for me. And she, in fact, one of the first things she told me was like, Ed, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like dogs when she first met, met Teddy, but she's like, but I like Teddy. So without further ado. <laughs> I, <laughs> there she is, Liz. Welcome to the show. So are you more of a dog fan now? I just want to know, Liz. Are we are we converting you? To a, no, you're still not a dog fan. <laughs> Not this morning. He's in trouble. He peed on the bed twice this morning. So she's learning to become a dog fan. But Okay. With, with time. Good. With time, Liz, it'll happen. We're going to wear you down family. here. But this but is little Leon Franklin Brown, and he's Teddy's little brother. Yeah. So. Oh, so cute. I have a feeling this is this is a match made in heaven. But Liz, clearly Ed's attempt to get over you didn't work because... I heard that the two of you have some big news. Do you care to share what this big news is? Yeah, we are engaged. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations, that's huge. No, Liz, I wanna hear from you specifically. How did the two of you kind of find your way back to each other? What was it that you couldn't stay away from Ed? Um, My clone. <laughs> no, definitely You know it wasn't the dog. Ed. Come on, now. you know it wasn't that. Um, no, I, I struggled a lot when we broke up. Um, I went through a really bad depression stage. Um, kind of just, I mean, you'll see um, coming up in the show um, how bad I got hurt or um, kind of felt used or just, you know. And um, went through a whole depression. Um, didn't really date, um, but it was very hard. Um, when I heard Teddy passed, it, it, it broke my heart. My, my boss told me Teddy had passed. Mm -hmm. And um, instantly, I like walked out of work and yeah, bought flowers and dropped it off and didn't say one word. Like, I didn't knock on the door. I drove around, locked to make sure the door was closed. I didn't want to see Ed. But like Teddy, Teddy was, Teddy was, um, I was not a dog person. Yeah. Teddy became one of my best friends. They become really humans at the end of the day. They're part of the family, I will say. So the sentiment, I, I understand completely. And Ed, do you think being a part of 90 Day, The Single Life, made you realize that everything you wanted was in Liz ultimately, and you kind of just needed to figure out your own stuff? Like, why did you ultimately decide to pop the question? What made you realize that Liz was really the person for you? About a month before we got back together, I kind of realized, you know, that I was, that I really didn't appreciate who she was and that, um, and I, I, and I don't want to love anybody else. And never in a million years that I think that um, I would ever be together with Liz. It's just, for me, it's surreal. And when I realized it was her on the video camera, I'm like, here's my chance. So, you know, I sent her this, you know, I told her the story about Teddy, how he had passed away. I was doing a comedy gig up in Los Angeles. And he actually died at about 7.30 in the morning. And I had to drive him back to San Diego. 
So I just kind of told Liz the story and through an email, and then she would respond back to me. And then um, when I decided that I was going to get Leon, then I sent her pictures of Leon, and her first reaction was, um, "Did you? Was this for somebody else?" And I'm like, "No." And then I get another email from Liz saying, "Okay, you understand what you just did? You understand how hard it is to raise a dog, to potty train?" I'm like, "Oh my God, I actually need Liz in my life." Like, see, because she thinks about things you know that I don't you know really think about. But I had one question for Liz, and the question was, "Am I your forever?" And she said yes. And she ended up leaving for work. And I did a beeline to the jewelry store and bought the biggest diamond I could find. And we, I had a plan in place. You want to kind of talk about what? I was going to say, Liz, from girl to girl, tell me about the proposal. I want all the details. <laughs> tell me what I wanted to do. <laughs> well, give me so the stuff, yeah. We were... Um, we emailed slightly, maybe three emails within one week of um, me and myself dropping off flowers. And we're kind of like slowly chatting. He asked if I'd come over for dinner. I was hesitant. I haven't seen him since the tell-off, um, wow. since after leaving the tell-off, um, or a day after the tell-off, actually. And um, um, all day he kept asking to come over and normally I would. And then I was like, yeah, sure. I'll be there at two. Then two would happen. And I sent him another text or finally we started texting each other. It was like, no, I'll be there at three. And I'm just like literally just sitting in my car for like four or five hours, like refusing to get out of my car. Finally get out. Cause I knew the second I saw him, I would become like vulnerable again. So I come in Friday night where I don't even think we had dinner. I think we were just talking at the table. Um, I mean, we talked all night. We talked all night. I had work in the morning. Um, I always keep an extra pair of clothes in my car for work and um, end up staying the night. So I was seeing on, we were seeing on Friday, back together on Saturday, engaged on Sunday. So we don't want to spoil too much because Fair. The, the next season is going to be more excited, exciting than the last season. Um, you're going to have to tune in to see what happened. But it turned out to be a beautiful moment. And um, I, I couldn't be happier. I know in my heart that she is my forever, you know, and we still look, we still, you know, argue, we still have our spats and whatever, um, but, but like any relationship, but at least in my heart, I know that she's my forever. And, and that's all I need to know. I don't want to be with anybody else. You know, I don't want to think about anybody else and, you know, that's Liz, show me, that. show me the ring, Liz. I just want to see it, just to make sure that uh, he. All right, good job, Ed. Okay, all right, you passed the test here. I, <laughs> good job. I can't wait to watch it all happen, Liz. Were you, you know, you sort of mentioned the going back and forth in your mind, sitting in your car, knowing that you, when you saw Ed again, you'd be really vulnerable again, and he'd broken up eight times, and it was kind of this roller coaster. What ultimately decided? You, you, what ultimately made you decide to get out of that car and go see him? What was it? Um, <laughs> my pretty face. <laughs> um, there was a lot of like unanswered questions I had, and I knew that um, at the end of our conversation, there would have been peace. I did not expect that we would have been back together. Honestly, I, I didn't think we'd be here right now I'm, I'm very very happy I'm so happy um people at my boss at my job has told me I've never like glowed as much or I've like I'm, I'm I don't walk into work with like a negative attitude like I have like the last, last couple of months and stuff like that um but I just knew that at the end of our conversation um questions would have been answered and um I just thought, okay, we can come out being friends. I mean, not like friends, but at least like if I were to ever run into him, I wouldn't hate him anymore. Like I work down the street from where we live now, where he has lived the last year or two. two. And um, I have to run errands to the bonds for the restaurant. And I would hate going in there. I'd rush in and rush out because I didn't want to run into him. Um, that's where we'd go grocery shopping before together when I lived here before. And, so yeah, I and just vice versa, peace. vice yeah. versa for me. Like I, I couldn't drive by her restaurant because I would be afraid 
if I saw her again, how I, I would react. And it was about a month before, you know, we got back together that I could actually drive by. I still wouldn't look in, but I could actually add enough, you know, um, gumption to drive by, you know, where she worked because, and I've been in North Park for 15 years. So, I mean, this is my hood. Right. And, and so it was, you know, really, really hard. So a lot of the same feelings when we talked, you know, like I had the same, like, what would we say to each other if, yeah. if we ran into each other? Like we, you know, would we be mad or would it be emotional or whatever? And, and when she showed up the, the, the first night, I mean, she was shaking like, and I was shaking, like, like it was, it was crazy. We could barely like hug each other. Like it was, yeah. it was. And, yeah. and, and Darren, I don't recommend, just FYI, I don't recommend anybody being on a on TV in a relationship. It just, my therapist was like, are you nuts? Are you, <laughs> relationships are hard enough, let alone you're on TV. So, and I think that had a lot to do with, um, you know, I mean, everything you saw was real, but at the same time, like it's, you know, you, you don't, you, at a certain point, you can't tell what's real and what's not real. And a lot of what you didn't see that the viewers didn't get to see was, was real, was this, like us, like, and we're actually really funny together. Like, oh yeah. I can just, I can kind of see the love kind of pouring. I, I can see Liz becoming a dog person slowly, slowly, but it's happening. You're whittling her down. And I think that's the point here. Do you guys have any wedding plans yet? Can you reveal them? Will they be filmed? Yes, we oh, come. We're, um, I mean, we have a lot on our plate right now. So trying to think about a wedding is really hard, but there, we're, we're, we're in the works of discussing about it and moving forward with our plans about it. So. In fact, when we got engaged, we ended up still going to Santa Barbara and we didn't want to tell anyone. We didn't want to tell, mm -hmm. you know, any of our family and friends because we wanted to enjoy that moment. Like, the only person that knew right away was my boss because I've never called out of work ever. And my boss is like, well, why aren't you showing up for your shift? And I'm like, and I told my other manager and he was like not letting it slide. And then I'm like, I, I like it. walk in professionally and I'm like, I'm kind of like engaged. And he's like, but you haven't been dating anyone. Like, I was like, I know. And then I got back together and he's like, what? And, he, <laughs> and, and Chef knew who I was. Like he, you know. Yeah. Of course. Well, Ed, will we see your reunion with Liz on this season of 90 Day The Single Life? Are we going to see that? Um, you're going to have to tune in possibly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As long as we get more Leon in my life, I'm very um, happy. So this is actually, this is Leon's first television um, appearance. Well, so. I'm, I'm very honored. I'm very lucky. Hopefully I'll be able to get an autograph from him, but I'm so happy for the two of you. You know, there you have it, people. Make sure you're checking those emails. Ed, Liz, thank you so much for joining me today. Congratulations again. I'm really excited about your future wedding and your couplehood. I hope that people get the exclusive wedding photos when the big day happens. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, Darren. It was so nice to meet you. Thank nice you. Meeting you. Nice meeting you as well, Liz. People, you can catch the season two premiere of 90 Day, The Single Life, beginning November 12th on Discovery+. Plus. You don't want to miss it. We have to take a quick break. More reality check when we come back.